Hi class, Mrs. Scheffler here again. Today we are going to be working on lesson 4.4 in your Beak Math book, page 173. We are going to be learning how to multiply using the expanded form. Our essential question is how can you use expanded form and place value to multiply a decimal and a whole number? So let's take a look at our word problem. The length of a day is the amount of time it takes a planet to make a complete rotation on its axis. On Jupiter, there are 9 and 8 tenths Earth hours in a day. How many Earth hours are there in 46 days on Jupiter? So let's take a look at what's important within our word problem and we'll highlight, underline, or circle those things. So, we know that there are 9 and 18th hours in a day in Jupiter. It's asking how many there are in 46 days on Jupiter. So let's figure out what our question is that we need to answer. And it's asking how many Earth hours are there in 46 days on Jupiter. One way that we can solve this is to use a model and partial products to solve the problem. So the first way we're going to do is to use that model. We're going to multiply 46 times 9 and 8 tenths. So step 1 requires us to think. Rewrite the factors in expanded form and label the model. So we have 46. We know 46 is 4 tenths or 40 and six ones. So if we come over and look at our model, we will do these vertically. We have our four tens or 40 and our six ones right below it. Now we have to look at our nine and eight tenths. We know that nine and eight tenths equals nine ones and eight tenths. So if we come over and break those apart, those go horizontally. We have our nine ones and our eight tenths. Our next step is to multiply to find the area of each section. The area of each section represents a partial product. So first we're going to multiply to find our first column of numbers. So we're going to take our 40 tens and multiply it by our nine ones. And we know that nine times four is 36 and we add our zero. So our answer for the box is going to be 360. Our next one is to take our six ones and multiply it by our nine ones. And six times nine is 54. So in our second box, we're going to put 54. Our next step is to multiply our four tenths or 40 by our eight tenths. And that's going to go into our second set of boxes. We know that 4 times 8 is 32 and we add a 0 because there is a 0 in our factor. So it's going to be 4 times 8 is 32 add a 0. Now since we have one place value to the right of the decimal in one of our factors we need to make sure that we have one digit to the right of our decimal in our answer. And that's why 40 times 8 tenths equals 32. Now, let's take our six ones and multiply it by our 8 tenths, and we're going to record it in our second box in our second column. We know that 6 times 8 is 48. We also know that since we have one place value to the right of our in our factor, we need to have one place value to the right of our answer. So 6 times 8 is 48, and then we have put the decimal one place value to where our answer is 4 and 8 tenths. So now we're going to record it. 9 and 8 tenths times 46. So we know that 40 times 9 is 360, which is our response in our first box. Now our next step is to take the 40 times 8 tenths, and we can look at that as our response right here. So we will take that answer and slide it into this box. Now 
Now our next step is to take 6 times 9 and we'll pull that from this box right here. So we'll take the 6 times 9, which is 54, and put it into this box right here. Now our last step is to take the 6 and 8 tenths and multiply those. And if we look back over, our remaining box is 4 and 8 tenths. So we'll take our 4 and 8 tenths and move it over into this box. Now we're going to add up our columns, making sure that we keep our decimal point in line. So we'll put our decimal point. We have zeros plus eight equals eight. Now we add our ones column. Zero plus two is two, plus four is six, plus four is ten. We record our zero and carry our one. Six plus three is nine, plus one is ten, plus five is 15. Record our 5, carry our 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. So we receive our response is 450 and 8 tenths. So when we look back over at our question, it says so there are 450 and 8 tenths Earth hours in 46 days on Jupiter. Now, what if you wanted to find the number of Earth hours in 125 days on Jupiter? How would you model change? Well, our model would change because the number of rows would increase to three rows and would show the labels 100, 20, and 5 for the factor 125. Now let's take a look at another word problem. A day on the planet Mercury lasts about 58 and 6 tenths Earth days. How many Earth days are there in 14 days on Mercury? So let's pull out the information we need to work with. And it says that Mercury lasts about 58.6 Earth days. And it's also asking how many days there are in 14 days on Mercury. So we are going to multiply 14 and 58 and 6 tenths. So step one is to write the decimal factor as a whole number. So if we look over here, we have 58 and 6 tenths. We know that in order to create a whole number out of it, we have to move the decimal one place to the right, which means we need to multiply by the power of 10. So since we only have to go one place to the right, we're going to multiply by 10. So that gives us 586. The next step is to multiply as with whole numbers. So we take our 586 and multiply it by the 14 days, which is going to give us a total of 8,204. Now we're not finished yet because now we have to take our answer back to the number of place values that we had in our original factor and that was 1. So in order to do that we have to take our 586 and multiply it by 1 tenth or move our decimal place 1 place value to the left to give us 58 and 6 tenths but then we're also going to have to take our answer of 8,204 and multiply it by one-tenth. Or move our decimal one place to the left. And that will give us an answer of 820 and four-tenths. So the decimal product is one-tenth of the whole number product. So to answer our question, we now know there are 820 and 4 tenth Earth days and 14 days on Mercury. So now let's look at the question. 
What if you rewrite the problem as 10 plus 4 times 58 and 6 tenths and use the distributive property so explain how this is similar to your model using place value. Well, using our knowledge of what we've learned about the distributive property, we know that when you multiply 58 and 6 tenths by 4 and then 10, you will get partial products to be added. Now you're going to have an opportunity to practice both ways that we have learned. In A, you're going to use a model, which means that you will be drawing it out just like we did in our first word problem today, in your 50 and 2, in your 3 tenths and 5 hundredths, and you will multiply each and fill in your table to find your answer. In B, you're going to use place value patterns, which is what we just did, in which you're going to multiply by the power of 10 in order to move your decimal to create a whole number and then you will have to multiply by the power of a tenth or a hundredth ever how many you need to move the place value back to the left in your answer. So bring both of those back to class with you tomorrow. Now you will need to get out your math journal and we're going to take some notes that we have been working on. As you take your math notes you're going to realize that we are reviewing the rules for decimals and our place values. We're reviewing our rules for adding decimals, for subtracting decimals, and now we are going to be including our multiplication rules for decimals. If need be, you may pause the video right here in order to have time to record it all. And last, you will need to record the password in your planner. Today's password goes back to chapter 3 vocabulary term. One of 10 equal parts is a tenth. So make sure you record the word tenth in your planner and bring it to class with you tomorrow.